My name is Patricia Steer, and I currently live in Houston, Texas. And I have a YouTube channel, and it's called Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. My name is Mark Kendall Sargent. I am from Whidbey Island, Washington. I am a professional flat earth researcher. My name is Sasha Cullen, and I live in Vancouver. Right now, at the moment, I'm a student. I reject the globe model of the Earth. So I make flat earth YouTube videos, and I'm also an artist. Um, my name is David Weiss. I am in uh, the sales industry. I also have a podcast called The Flat Earth Podcast, talking about the reality of where we live. I first started to question the idea of, of the globe Earth model because I don't find that there's sufficient evidence for it but along the way of course yes it's it's such a foreign idea to to us right especially in the earlier days i would wake up and think wait a minute this is madness this can't be true and and then i would go through it and i would look at the research that i've done and then i would kind of sit and think about it and realize no this is true oh i doubted it for a year i i, I was just desperately looking for something to prove that the earth is a ball i immediately was transfixed. I immediately was uh, interested. I didn't laugh at all. Although in the past, whenever Flat Earth was probably brought up to me, and I don't even remember if it ever was, but I, I can imagine that I would have thought it was just a dumb concept. I ran into a Canadian guy, of all things. He worked for NASA as a subcontractor. He was told that, that the United States GPS system doesn't work down in Antarctica because it's flat. And so I spent a weekend and really dug into it, and that's where everything started to fall apart. So I did a podcast called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, and um, some fans, after uh, two years of the podcast, started sending me Mark Sargent's video, Flat Earth Clues. I dug in for two weeks trying to debunk it, and then I realized uh, we don't live on a spinning ball, and everything I've been led to believe my entire life um, is a lie. We've been indoctrinated since before uh, preschool uh, that we live on a spinning ball. Everybody knows it. But one thing that all flat earthers agree upon is that we don't live on a spinning ball flying through space. The way people react when I say that I reject the globe model of Earth varies significantly depending on who they are. So I find that, you know, people who have first year physics in university, so a lot of the engineers, they tend to be the most angry. Um, I choose n really not to get into that situation. Uh, I, I kind of feel people out. I'll, I'll throw a piece of inf information out there and if they, uh, if they uh, engage and ask questions, I'll give them answers, but I, I you can easily get into an argument, but uh, I don't get into many. It's a broad spectrum of reactions. It really depends on your educational background and perhaps your field of study. So yeah, people knew me, you know, they knew that I believed in different things, but the crowd I hung out with, which were really, you know, a lot of geeks and nerds and dorks, uh, they were really accepting of that anyway. And my parents were real good about letting me, you know, uh, express myself. When I told people that Flat Earth was something I was interested in, family members, friends, they all kind of raised an eyebrow. But I sent videos, and some of them became interested, and some of them now are Flat Earthers. Flat Earth to be accepted as a fact in mainstream society, I say this <laughs> with a touch of sadness, but <laughs> um, it would take A-list celebrities, you know, a few YouTubers, some Instagram stars, because unfortunately, that's how our society works. Hypothetically, I would have to see live footage, video footage of the Earth uh, spinning. Um, why doesn't NASA put a camera on the moon? The moon has one side supposedly just facing us at all times. If they put a, a, a camera on there videoing the Earth in real time and seeing the Earth spin with current weather patterns, that would be proof because you can't fake that. What, what will it take? Uh, a bandwagon? 
more more than anything, what I've been putting out there and getting other people to, to do is like, look, just just talk about it. We're so close, but as far as breaking it wide open, yeah, eventually there's going to have to be a whistleblower from one of the space agencies, hopefully NASA. One of the goals of myself and other people involved with the Flat Earth Awakening is to get it out to more and more people. I like that term a lot better than Flat Earth Theory because it's an awakening process when you find out that you've been lied to and then you try to find out why. The role of religion in Flat Earth is not just significant, it's entrenched. It's almost essential. Uh, the, core, the core concept of Flat Earth lends to all aspects of religion. And I don't mean just Christianity, I mean the Big Five. So immediately there was a huge response to uh, to the flat earth in terms of religious groups latching onto the concepts. I think a lot of people come to the flat earth theory through different means. And some of people are coming in from the religious angle. The thing is, when you reject the globe model, what you're left with implies design. And design, of course, implies a designer. There isn't a dominant religion within Flat Earth. There isn't any sort of mandatory involvement in any religious group or organization. There are people who are Christians and people who are Muslim who have found that their particular biblical texts, the Quran, the Bible, have made references to the Earth being a circle, which is a flat thing, by the way. There's just a lot of Christian Flat Earthers because when you wake up to it and you're a Christian, you can see all the all of the evidence in the Bible pointing to the flat Earth. You know, people say the the Bible proves the Earth isn't flat. Well, if you actually look into it, there's a whole bunch of Christian flat Earthers out there that show um, clearly point out in the Bible all of the things that point to the flat Earth. All of these ancient religions talked about a flat Earth. All of them. The only one that doesn't talk about a flat earth is NASA, and NASA is a religion. The only reason that NASA exists is to keep us believing that we're this tiny little ball flying through infinite space. For those of the uh, people listening out there, you say they're saying that, oh, well, NASA's fake. You know, you're, you're, are you saying that the entire American space program was fake? I'm going, no, no, it's much worse than that. It's that the only reason NASA was founded in 1958 was to keep this thing under wraps for as long as possible. You know, in NASA, they benefit in terms of the $20 billion a year that NASA gets from taxpayers. And in exchange, it's providing CGI, computer-generated composite images, and NASA itself admits this on their website. So it's not like they take a picture of the Earth out in space, it's more like they they take data. So I think it has a lot to do with power and it has a lot to do with money. They went to the moon in the 60s and 70s, but we've not been off planet since then. We've got all this technology now, so why haven't they done it? These are questions that rattled around inside my head. That's what got the whole ball rolling, getting people to truly believe that we have been to space. Governments, you know, government means control the mind govern is control and mint is the mind. Um, governments are mostly lies. Why would the governments try to hide this at all? Is because of power. You can't be the ultimate authority in the world if you're not the ultimate authority. Do I believe in any other conspiracy theories? Uh, I, I would turn that question around is, do you believe that two or more people would conspire for their own benefit? And, and the answer to that is, of course you believe that. So that is the definition of a conspiracy. So there's conspiracies every day. There's a lot of conspiracies out there, massive in size, and, and that most people would just short circuit if they, uh, if they heard them. I was uh, uh, do, exposing a lot of them. Then I realized that Flat Earth is the most important 
conspiracy out there. All conspiracy guys have their favorites. You know, not every conspiracy person believes in every conspiracy. The, the, one of the things I love about Flat Earth is just about every other conspiracy you can think of dovetails into it because it's physically the world. So every other conspiracy other than that pretty much is inside it. Do I care about them as much? No, I don't because the Flat Earth is so huge that it, it really reduces the impact of the other conspiracies. I'm a conspiracy realist, not a conspiracy theorist. I've investigated many, many things that have happened in our society and have found many holes in the story that we are told by history and by the media about what went on. I enjoy conspiracy theories. Um, um, because I enjoy questioning, because I enjoy challenging things that I'm told to believe, because I'm always curious about the distinction between what I believe to be true and what I know to be true. reaction to the SpaceX Tesla launch? I think that the SpaceX launch... The Tesla Roadster launched by Elon Musk. He supposedly took one of his Tesla Roadsters, supposedly sent up on a Falcon Heavy booster and sends it up into orbit and then supposedly slingshots it around the sun on the way to Mars. My reaction to that was utter disgust. It's propaganda. I think it's, it's very slick propaganda. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. And it is one of the finest uh, examples of misdirection I have ever seen in film. Nothing was launched into space. It was completely faked. And the people that think it's real, um, I question people. And they say, oh, it was amazing, this and that. And I asked, did they see it? And everyone so far said, no, I didn't, but I heard about it. They're, you're just believing a story. And it is nearly kind of an idolatry really they kind of worship Elon a little bit and it's a fantasy that they really lose themselves in and I don't think that's healthy I think that that we should be given the truth I think Elon Musk is a I think he's a traitor to mankind if you're listening to this right now you already have an opinion about flat earth and most of the people out there are going to be against it. But do not, under any circumstances, take my word for it. Don't believe a, a, a thing I say. Uh, you know, do your own research and ask questions. And that's how it works with everybody. The Flat Earth community is very diverse. I think for the media to paint us as unscientific religious nuts, but that's not at all who we are. I think people would be surprised at how many of us there are in different positions. It's not just a religious community. It's not just the conspiracy theory minded people. There are a lot more science oriented people that are getting into the flat earth movement. And it's exciting. If you believe that the earth is a ball, you have to ask yourself why. And if your answer is there's hundreds of proofs, there's thousands of proofs. Well, that's not any proof at all. You want to say, photos of earth from space and i'll show you why it's fake and you will agree there is no proof we live on a spinning ball there's tons of proof we live on a flat earth you're gonna go home and it's like oh, flat earth is so stupid and then you're gonna you're gonna do the absolutely wrong thing and you're gonna try to look it up on the internet and you're gonna say well and then you'll say oh, i'll watch one more thing or i'll watch one more thing and four days later you'll be cursing my name there's so much magic happening on earth flat earth is part of that magic it's part of reality you've been listening to across not around flat earthers in their world produced by chris thomas tasha sandu and justin salpico music by kevin mcleod is licensed under creative commons